Hey, what's up guys? I've got a little something for you today. This is uh, more an exercise in programming than really in hardware, but you know, it all works together in the end. So I think it's pretty cool. Let me share it with you. This is my Morse code translator. And what it does is it takes uh, whatever comes in through the serial port text and translates it into Morse code that you can hear and see. So what we've got here is the Nano. We have our grounds connected to the ground rails and we have plus five volts connected to this rail over here for this. This is an active buzzer. You see it has three connections. So the first connection is signal, which is coming over here to D6. The second one is plus five volts and the third one is ground. If you don't have an active buzzer and all you have is a piezo buzzer, you know, um, you have to make a little bit of change in the code, but it'll still work. And I'll, I'll explain that to you when we look at the code. Secondly, we have an LED. This is a yellow one. We've got a resistor soldered onto the cathode and it's coming over here going to D12. These pin assignments are completely arbitrary and you can make them whatever you want. All right, let's go look at the code and I'll sh then we'll come back and see how this works. All right, let's take a quick look at the code here. This is my Morse code translator and it takes a serial input and translates it into Morse code, which is sent to a buzzer and an LED. Uh, the only caveat right now is it must be in all caps because I didn't feel like coding all the lowercase. I also didn't do the numbers, but once you see how this works, you can do it yourself if you like this. All right, no libraries, no defines. For variables, the first one is a string called mcode, and that's where we will store the input from the serial port. Next is a byte called mcode length. We need to figure out how long mcode is. Then we have a byte called space. This is a delay variable. You can change it to suit yourself and a character variable called i, which we will use to parse out the individual characters. In setup, we always start with a serial begin at 9600 because if you need to debug, nothing's better than seeing the output of your variables and such. Pin mode 6 to output, put the buzzer on output. Pin mode 12 to output, that would be the LED setup for output. Okay. Now we have some functions. The first one is the function for dot. And what we're doing is we're writing a high to the buzzer and the LED. We are waiting a short period of time. Then we're turning them off. And then we have a standard delay at the end of every character. So the short delay here is what defines the dot. Now, if you don't have an active buzzer, simply change uh, the digital write for the buzzer to a tone command and the digital write low to a no tone command and that'll work for your piso. Next we have the dash. We write our buzzer and our LED high, we turn them on. Then we have our long delay that defines the dash. Then we turn them off. Then we have our standard delay here. Now we're going to skip over these other functions for now until we go down to the main loop of the program. And the first thing we're saying is while serial is available, which means something is coming through the serial port, then we define a character type called in character. And that character is read from the serial port. Then our string M code is equal to what's in M code plus that character. So since we are starting from nothing, our first character will be the first thing, but as we move on, this, this will grow. And then we say, if in character equals a new line, meaning we've got the carriage return, the new line, that's the end of our input. Then this is just for debugging serial print line M code, and we do our do string, which is how we process that. Once we're done with all that, we wait for a second and we reset the string. 
So let's jump up here and take a look at do string. Here we have our do string function. So the first thing we do is we get the length of that string. So mcode length equals mcode, which is the name of our variable, dot length function. And that will return, I believe it's an integer, but it could be a byte. It'll return the length. Now that we have the length, we start this little for loop here and we say for integer x, and x can be anything you want. We start at zero because we're treating the string as an array. X is less than or equal to M code length. So if our M code length is five, it's going to do this five times zero through four. And then we increment by one X at the end. And we say I, which is a character variable, equals M code, which is the name of our string, period, character at position X. Now we take that character at position X, which is now called I, and we translate it to Morse code. So we go up here to translate. This is our translate function. And we switch on character I, whatever it is. So for instance, if that character is an A, and you notice here we have case A, and the A has single quotes around it. That is how you mark a character. A string is marked with double quotes. Pay attention to that, or you're going to get a compiler error. So the Morse code for A is dot dash. So we do dot, our standard delay, dash, our standard delay. And then we break out of that switch. And you see there's nothing at the end, which means we go back to our main loop, and it translates the next character. I'm sorry, it goes back to string and it translates the next character. When that is all finished, we come down here, delay a second, and we reset the string. I know it's a little confusing, but if you read the code, I've, I've got it commented out pretty well. You should be able to figure it out. Let's check it out in action. All right, we've got our serial port set up here. Everything is plugged in and ready to go. So all I have to do is type in a string of characters, and when I hit enter, we get that. And whatever you type in, it simply translates into the Morse code. Which, I don't know about you, but I think this is just pretty cool. So, that's about it. Thanks for watching. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up, share it, and if you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you waiting for?